Listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. Cruising beyond the rough and tumble, macho, good old boy market, ad execs have discovered that spirituality sells. So, unlike the screaming messages of aggression, a whole other breed of ad is capitalizing on the growing American trend toward spirituality. Yes, those same SUVs responsible for desecrating our sacred places are being portrayed not as a vehicle for driving, but as vehicles for finding one spiritual path. Consider an ad for the Hummer H1. Here we see a dreamy white sand beach, sun high overhead with the understated silhouette of a tank-like vehicle in the distance. The small font reads, How did my soul get way out here? The tagline, Sometimes you find yourself in the middle of nowhere. And sometimes in the middle of nowhere you find yourself. Welcome to the new world of aging. A world in which liberals used to unending economic growth. And greens focused on zero population growth will find themselves uncomfortable. Instead of overpopulation, it will be underpopulation that will be the world's biggest problem. First in the West, and then most likely the rest of the world. Only nations with high immigration that can make the switch from a youth economy to an old person's economy will survive. This will mean among the biggest changes in human history pensions, growth economies, 9-5 work, Male domination all must end if we are to successfully navigate the age quake ahead. Before 1600, Portugal controlled most European trade with India and the Far East, an area known then as the Indies. But in 1600 Queen Elizabeth I gave a royal charter to a new trading company, the East India Company by which it was given a monopoly over all British trade with the Indies. The company soon began competing with the Portuguese, as did later East India companies, set up in the Netherlands, Denmark and France, though for ease. The term East India Company shall be used here to describe the British East India Company. The East India Company's first major base was in Western India, where it found a rich source of exotic textiles and other produce which could be exported back to Britain or taken further east to exchange for spices. Nevertheless, it was inevitable that the copyright holders were going to be a little less than pleased with P2P. With support and advocacy from certain artists themselves, most notably Metallica's Lars Ulrich and Dr. Dre, the record industry began to fight this cultural sea change. Napster was shut down under court order and many of the other early P2P systems followed. However, others sprang up to replace them almost as quickly as others were knocked down. The development of BitTorrent has added a whole new approach to file sharing veiled with a layer of legitimacy. Barbie started as a toy, the kind of toy that got whisked off store shelves faster than Mattel, the doll's first maker. Now, thanks to Barbie, the world's largest toy manufacturer can restock those shelves. Barbie's star rose with post-war US hegemony that made everyone in the world want fast food, appliances, Coca-Cola, and, if you were a woman, blonde hair, big breasts, impossibly long legs, and the latest in sunglasses and sports cars. Barbie never got pregnant, fat, or rolled. She stood her own in stores as a mute, brassy standard not just of beauty but of lifestyle. A psychologist, employed by the Royal Automobile Club, RAC, defines road rage, thus, Unchecked behavior designed to cause harm to another road user, behavior which is not normally in the behavioral repertoire of the person. Road rage is an altering of an individual's personality whilst driving caused by a process of dehumanization, which is caused by road use frustrations and an artificial sense of insulation, protection, and empowerment provided by the car. This leads the person to behave in a way designed to cause harm or endanger other road users.
The meaning of restoration at Westminster can be vividly illustrated by an unexpected example, the history of the effigy of Queen Elizabeth I. This figure was dismissed for years as a second-rate 18th-century copy of the original. Indeed, the exterior of the abbey has been regarded in a similar way. However, in the effigy as in the building, not only is the 18th-century interpretation of the earlier period important in its own right, but the early fabric turns out to remain at the heart. The effigy acquired a new head and new clothes in 1760, not through insensitive vandalism, but to show off Elizabeth's central role in the abbey's history more effectively, just as Wren and Nicholas Hawksmoor had refaced the fabric of the building a few decades before. To try to strip away the contribution of later generations in order to reveal some mythical prime original is a profound misunderstanding of Westminster's rich complexity. To understand the terms revival and revitalization, first you have to understand the current state of these languages. Linguists have a variety of grim-sounding terms for languages with few or no native speakers. A language which has no native speakers, people who grew up speaking the language as a child, is called dead or extinct. A language which has no native speakers in the youngest generation is called moribund. A language which has very few native speakers is called endangered or imperiled. Different chocolate manufacturing processes were also invented along the way. Three of the biggest processes to change the way in which chocolate was made and consumed were the addition of milk, instead of water, to chocolate. This idea, credited to Sir Hans Sloane, further reduced cacao bitterness and improved taste. Sir Sloane kept his discovery a trade secret for some time before selling the recipe to a London apothecary, which later on became the property of the Cadbury brothers. Condensed and powdered milk eventually replaced whole milk allowing for a smoother and far sweeter product than before, milk chocolate is by far the most popular chocolate item in America today. Like, share, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates.